Before your throne, by the blood of Christ, our sins atone. We have confidence before your throne, your righteousness is now. Welcome, church family and those watching. We just wanted to welcome you to our online experience this weekend and just wanted to wish a special Father's Day to those dads that are watching. We're the clerks, and I'm Tyler. This is my wife, Nicole, and this is Asher. Yay! We are so happy that you are joining us this Father's Day. And to all you dads out there, both spiritual and natural, we just want to say thank you for all that you do. We appreciate all your time and energy that you put into loving, guiding, encouraging, supporting, and pr protecting and providing for all your loved ones. We just want to honor you and just say you are seen, you are loved, you are valued, and you're admired and needed far more than you'll ever know. So thank you for being a picture of Christ to all your children. And we just want to pray a special blessing over you right now. Dear Jesus, we just thank you for this day that we can honor our fathers. God, we thank you for the men in our lives, God, that you have raised up to be examples of Christ for those following them. God, for those fathers, we just ask that you would give them a special grace and blessing today, that Jesus, that they would feel your delight and pleasure, and God, that you would just give them renewed energy and strength and passion for life. And Jesus, we pray for those who have maybe recently lost their fathers or are grieving, yeah, a poor father figure in their life. God, we just ask that you would comfort them today. And Jesus, also for any fathers that are feeling like they maybe haven't lived up to what they wanted to do, God, that you would just bless them, that you would give them encouragement and that where there's any broken family relationship, God, we just agree with them that you will bring restoration. And again, we just thank you for all our, our fathers. In your name, Jesus, amen. Amen. And this being my first Father's Day definitely doesn't make me a dad expert, but in my short time being a dad, one of the things that has stuck out to me is just the joy that Asher brings to me as I just watch him interact with the world and spend time with him. He just brings me joy. And I just know that's just a little glimpse of the way our Father in heaven sees us as he looks down on us. So I want to encourage you that no matter who you are or what you've done, that the Father just looks at you with joy and uh, just celebrates you. So as we transition to worship, just want to encourage you, yeah, today's a day to celebrate the dads in our lives. Let's celebrate our Heavenly Father in worship. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there.
heart cries, these lungs sing over you, my worthy King of Kings. All my love, all my love, all my love, you can have it all. All my love, all my love, all my love, you can have it all. All my heart and all my soul. Alabaster heart, and when I think of that, I think of the story. And here in Luke it says, when a certain immoral woman from the city heard Jesus was eating there, she brought a beautiful alabaster jar filled with expensive perfume. Then she knelt behind him at his feet, weeping. Her tears fell on his feet, and she wiped them off with her hair. Then she kept kissing his feet and putting perfume on them. strange act now but even back then it was worse because for a woman to be doing this it, it, people would have looked at her strange and then people did wonder what she was doing but her heart was so set on loving Jesus that she was willing to to break protocol she was willing to do something that hadn't been done before she was willing to to be seen strange she was willing to be uncomfortable and sometimes for us we have to be willing I'll say for all of us, all the time, be willing to be pushed beyond what's comfortable. Be willing to, to let the Holy Spirit take you to, to beyond what you're used to. Because if you're pursuing the heart of Jesus, it will always pay off when you're, when you're pursuing Him that way. With just pure honesty, no matter the cost. And for her, it cost her, cost her oil, but for us, it's our heart. That's coming and laying our heart before Jesus and saying, here it is, Lord, all my heart, all my soul, all my own God. And that's what where we want to declare in this moment as Emma keeps singing that, God, that we are giving you everything. We're giving you everything, Lord.
exalt you. You're high, you lift it up. You're high, you lift it up. In our city, you're high, you lift it up, God. You're high, you lift it up, God. In our church, you're high, you lift it up, God. In this season, we put you first, God. In our families, we put you first, God. In our jobs, we put you first, God. In our lives, we put you first, God. We exalt you, God. What's your name? Dustin Whitaker. What's your daddy's name? David Whitaker. Why do you admire your daddy? Because he gets hugs. He says, I love you. What do you like to do with your daddy? Um, play, help kisses, even sleep. You like to sleep with daddy, have naps? How do you do that? Can you show us? But no snoring. What else do you like to do with Daddy? Uh, that's everything. Okay. You say I love you, Daddy. I love you, Daddy. Bye. What's your name? Harper Wilcox. What's your daddy's name? Daryl Quirk. And what do you admire most about your daddy? That he works for me, he, ca he makes money for me, and he catches the bad guys. Catching bad guys, pow, pow, pow! <laughs> and what do you love doing with your daddy? Um, he plays with me, go for bike rides with me, and he cooks supper for me. Anything else? Mm. And he buys toys for me. Say I love you, Daddy. Love you, Daddy. Bye. Dinosaurs. You like playing with dinosaurs? Dinosaurs, Mommy. Yeah, you like playing with dinosaurs. Dinosaurs. I like to be with Daddy. I like to go um, out with him. Um, to go to Tim Hortons and eat stuff at lunch or supper at breakfast time. I like to play with Daddy and I like to spend time with him and I like to play wrestle with him. I like to go out for breakfast with him in the country. I love you, Daddy. I love you, Daddy. I love you, Daddy. Love you, Daddy. Happy Father's Day. Hello, Regina Apostolic Church family and those who are joining with us again for our online worship experience again today. We're so thankful that you decided to come and join with us again. We have the great privilege this weekend. It is Father's Day weekend, and so we're taking some time here between the four of us. We are going to speak about fathers and talk about what it looks like to honor our fathers. Of course, we know that the Bible speaks about honoring our fathers and our mothers in order to have long life in the land. It actually was a commandment that was given to us 
uh, in Exodus. So we know that there is something very powerful as we just take the time today to honor, in particular, our fathers. You know, I need to tell you, after Mother's Day, I had, I had a few questions from people. They said to me, why is it exactly that you had men speaking about Mother's Day? And uh, I, I had to tell them, listen, just wait, look forward to the day on Father's Day where I will have women speaking about fathers. So now the circle is complete. You now understand why we did it the way that we did it. And today I'm privileged to have three members of our board who are here with us today. Immediately to my left is Melanie Hebner and Mona Switzer and Doreen Pretzlaw. And it's actually in Doreen and Gerard Pretzlaw's condominium that we find ourselves today and it is such a beautiful mm -hmm. setting. I will try not to get too distracted looking out the window too much today because it is a beautiful view down Broad Street that we can see today, and it is a sunny, beautiful day out there. I want to say, in particular, on Father's Day, you know, we can think about a number of beautiful things that we've seen in the lives of fathers, and I can certainly think of that in my own life. My father, uh, Mel, he's uh, 84 years old, still gets out to ride his horse most days, and there's lots about him that I can love and that I can honor. And in the same way, these, these ladies will have uh, stories to tell and insights to give about the fathers and spiritual fathers in their lives as well. So we're just going to have a conversation about it today, and the, the most important thing that we want to accomplish is really to bring glory to our Father in heaven. Even as we talk about our earthly fathers, we know that there is only one perfect Father, and that's our Father in heaven. And so everything that we do today, we want to bring glory to his name, even as we honor the fathers that are in our lives. So we're going to get started are you ready? We're going to jump sure. right in here today. <laughs> Maybe ready or not, here we, here we go. So Mel, I'll begin with you. As you think about your dad and the, the spiritual fathers in your life, are there characteristics of God that you saw modeled uh, in your father, in, in spiritual fathers in your life that really helped you become who you are today? Yeah, well, my dad, his name is Dave for anyone who doesn't know who he is. And I think the first thing I think about when I think about the characteristics of God that he models is trustworthiness. Mm. Um, I think about how much I trust my dad and you know, looking back on my life, I can't remember a time or a moment where I haven't trusted him and he has you know, never given me a reason to, to not trust him. Mm. And I think specifically the biggest and, and the most fundamental way that that was demonstrated um, you know, I've always known that I could completely trust that my dad loved God, he loved yeah. my mom, and he loved my brother and I. And in that order, um, you know, I have never doubted and was never given any reason to doubt that um, that he loved us and, and, you know, God and my mom because he lived that out in mm. his life. So I think the security of knowing that I can trust my dad and the fact that um, one of the ways that was lived out resulted in God being given the highest priority in our house growing mm. up resulted in me becoming who I am today. Mm. Fantastic. Wow. You know, I know your mom and your dad, and your dad is just so. When you say faithful, I just think that there is a consistency that I see in him. And I know that uh, when we have church, when we're allowed to be in the church building, they're just so faithful to be there at the 9 o'clock service. And I know that I can count on a handshake and, a, you know, some, some love from your mom and dad and, and your dad. I just appreciate him so much. So when you say that, it, it just rings so, so true yeah. to me so that he's such yeah. a man of God. So yeah. thanks for that, Mel. Yeah. Mona. Uh, father, your father and spiritual fathers, are there things that, you know, those characteristics of God that you uh, saw modeled that, you know, really helped you become who you are today as well? Absolutely. I, um, for those that may not know, my parents' marriage ended when I was two. And so my maternal grandparents became very important and very uh, influential in my life uh, to the point where they, you know, we lived with them for a, a period of time and then next door for a period of time. And, mm. But I can say from both my grandfather and my father, always felt unconditional love. Mm. I knew there were things that I could do that maybe would disappoint them. I could do things that required discipline from time to time, <laughs> but never did I question their love. Mm. Never did I question that there, I would ever do anything that um, would change that in them for me. And so as a result, I have absolutely no problem understanding the unconditional love of a heavenly father mm. because I have never never questioned whether or not anything I would do would be out of the realm of mm. being lovable. Yeah. And so I, I'm thankful for that because it absolutely has patterned for me the unconditional love of the father. Yeah, for sure. 
I didn't know your uh, your dad, but I, or your grandparents so much, but I certainly know your father-in-law, uh, Murph, <laughs> yeah. and uh, you definitely have got a rich sort of a household full of that same sort of love uh, just in the family absolutely. that you married into as well. Mm -hmm. so, absolutely. Yeah, you definitely walk in the blessings of a, of a father's love there too. I sure do. Yeah. So in Doreen, in that same way, are there characteristics of God that you saw modeled uh, that really helped you become who you are as well? Well, Pastor Jim, um, my dad was Selden Buchanan, and he has since passed. He'd be over 100 now if he still was alive. <laughs> mm. But I think the couple of things that uh, he modeled were consistency, reliability, perseverance. Mm. Uh, reliable, it used to be said he was as good as his word. Mm. Uh, mm -hmm. You didn't need to, too much collateral to make a business deal back then. Mm -hmm. And sometimes also he would be out of his comfort zone. So now I see that as being courage, mm. courageous. Yeah. Uh, in fact, it, sometimes he would, it would, might be an awkward way of sharing his testimony, hmm. perhaps at a funeral mm -hmm. where he had sung the solo hymn as people came to compliment him on mm -hmm. his singing, mm -hmm. he would give them a testimony of what mm -hmm. Christ meant to him. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That's fantastic. Mm -hmm. So in all, of your, in all of those cases, and maybe I'll start with you, Doreen, like mm -hmm. did he, he must have been then influential in you actually coming to faith in Christ then, like as seeing someone that was consistent like that, especially being willing to share his testimony like that, must have been a very influential person for you to come to Jesus then too. Yes. The most courageous they were, my mom and dad, is they said yes to the Lord mm -hmm. after a, tra a family tragedy mm -hmm. and searching for meaning and purpose. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They went to a little town called Bobier, Saskatchewan, mm. and we lived uh, across the back alley from the Pentecostal church mm. and beside the Lutheran church, mm. and people there were praying. My mom and dad became Christians. Mm. There was a great transformation, and from then mm. on, it, everything changed. Yeah. So yes, it was really uh, very noticeable. I was five years old then. Okay, mm. oh. fantastic. And Mona, in the same way, would there have been, you know, those influences, influences of you actually coming to faith in Christ, oh. that you can look back on those mm. days that that was a key, you know, driver in you becoming a Christian too? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. There was, you know, church and church attendance and God's people were absolutely the bedrock mm. of our home and our, you know, e existence, to be yeah. quite honest. I mean, yeah, there was no, it wasn't, shall we go to church? It's mm -hmm. get in the car. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we're going again, get in the car. And, and I mean, you know, I suppose as a child, there were times when I didn't always appreciate that. But as an adult, absolutely, mm -hmm. that yeah. foundation and that mm -hmm. just unwavering commitment yeah, that was consistency. absolutely yeah. priceless. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And Melanie, in the same way? Yeah, I feel almost the same as, as Mona. Like, you know, that pattern was just set out that, you know, we went to church and God was, you know, a priority. So mm -hmm. having that lived out for me, even though I, you know, I came to know the Lord at a really young age, mm -hmm. but even after that, having that modeled as this is how you, you live as a mm -hmm. Christian and this is how you act. And yeah. that, yeah, was definitely modeled out yeah. in our mm -hmm. own. It was certainly the same way in my household. I actually grew up uh, just outside of Virginia in a little town called Lumsden. And my dad got saved later in life. And it was just a couple of years before I was born. And so there was a pattern that was started at that point that they were, it made me think of what you said, Mona, we're going to church. <laughs> there was a certain time you had to be on the highway by you know, like 20 after nine in order to get there by 10. <laughs> and we were doing it. It didn't matter if it was snowing, if yeah. it was raining, mm -hmm. if there was a, you know, a mm -hmm. tsunami. We were getting in the car and we were doing this thing. Yeah. We were going to church. Mm -hmm. And so there was a faithfulness. And maybe that was back to what you said mm -hmm. earlier, Mel. Like there was a faithfulness in that, that it didn't, it wasn't like I went to church and only loved God when I felt like it. It was just one mm -hmm. of those things that was a lifestyle pattern yeah, uh, right. that was there. And it drew me to, to Jesus at a, mm -hmm. at a young age. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, we think about influential people in our lives, and sometimes that's friends or, you know, camp counselor, that kind of thing. But mm -hmm. it starts in the home and where, you know, kids, at, we as children, then see our parents uh, modeling that for us. Well, then, mm -hmm. of course, we're, um, you know, they're demonstrating the kingdom for us, I mm -hmm. guess, and, and leading us to, to Jesus. Mm -hmm. So thinking sure. of that then, Mel, uh, are there godly characteristics of your father that you can now see in yourself coming through? If, and, you know, when you think of that, sometimes uh, when we get introduced, someone will say, oh, well, I can tell you're such and such's child. Do you have those sorts of things where there are just characteristics and his personality traits that, of God that you see uh, coming through? 
Yeah, like I mentioned earlier that one of the things I think is his trustworthiness that um, has been modeled for me the most. And he's also very consistent. You said that yourself mm -hmm. and he's a person of integrity. And, you know, I have the privilege of serving in a variety of roles in different places. And, um, you know, the reason I've ended up in some of those places is because people have, you know, said they recognize those same things mm -hmm. in me. And I think the, re the biggest reason why is because they were modeled for me from my dad and certainly my mom too, but, mm -hmm. um, you know, my dad as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, they say, what's the, the line? 90% is just showing up. And I know <laughs> yeah. like there's uh, definitely with you, Mel, that I know that if you're asked to do something or you're a part of something, I know that it's solid. Mm -hmm. And uh, and to know that that was something that you yeah. saw modeled and almost sure. inherited from your Yeah, dad. I would so say, and even, you know, even beyond that, I think of my grandparents and my, my right. grandpa and mm -hmm. how he, you know, served. And I think that was definitely passed down to my, mm -hmm. my, my dad and, you know, yeah. just and generational. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. Mona, in that same way, do you see those godly characteristics, uh, you know, in your in yourself as well? Well, I'd like to think so, yeah. <laughs> 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 when I was kind of pondering this question, the word integrity came to mind, and again, mm -hmm. it was more my grandpa Keating, mm -hmm. and he, um, as I said, played a large role in my life and stuff, and he was a man of his word. He mm -hmm. always, you know, he, we kind of joked about it sometimes because he'd say, well, what good is my word if I, you know, <laughs> don't go and do that today? And you think, well, it's a howling blizzard. Like, you can stay home, but no, no, what good is my word? And so, um, but yeah, he was a man of his word. And he, um, if he made a commitment to something, it was going to happen. He mm. would not rest mm. until it was done. And that didn't matter if that was driving people to church or planting the garden or paying his bills or whatever. He did everything he did as though he was doing it for the Heavenly Father. Mm. And um, I remember <laughs> countless times when there'd be summer VBS or something going on at their church and he'd make three and four trips to make sure every kid that wanted to go was at church yeah. or, you know, they'd plant a garden that to me as a child seemed gigantic <laughs> but and way more than our family needed. But if, you know, wanted to have plenty so that if someone mm. in need, you know, came along, he had yeah. potatoes to give them or whatever. And so, um, yeah, I was always, I mean, I guess as a child it seemed just, natural it's as an adult you look back on some of that stuff and and think oh wow you know that was commendable and so yeah as I look back I, I realized that yeah integrity and so while the things we do are a bit different I'm not planting a garden or anything <laughs> but um he uh yeah I would like to think that I do what I do with that same integrity and yeah. with that same commitment to yeah, yeah. absolutely honor. absolutely that's so good yeah. Mm -hmm. And Doreen, in that same way, do you see those, some of those characteristics of your dad uh, coming through in yourself as well? Yes. Uh, one of them that I couldn't out-compete him on <laughs> is uh, he paid his bills on time and probably early. I remember <laughs> him buying a car, mm -hmm. a 59 Chev, mm. avocado green, ah, three big wings. Avocado, excellent. Yes. That's fantastic. <laughs> and he paid that off early. Mm. Not that we had a lot of money. <clears throat> We didn't know we were poor, yeah. <laughs> but we always had enough. Mm -hmm. uh, another thing uh, that we developed in the car on the way to church or other places, we sang in the car. Mm. And I learned three-part harmony in the car because mm. he was a strong lead, uh, the melody, mm -hmm. and we seemed to find our parts. Oh, fantastic. Well, my mom sat there and just listened and <laughs> hummed along quietly. <laughs> That's fantastic. I think another characteristic is he was, he cheered for the underdog. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, perhaps he let, because of his own background, he was the son of, um, he was a, a child, uh, 12, the youngest of oh, 12. Wow. wow. Nine lived to be adults. Uh, he had his mother pass away when he was six. Mm -hmm. So he had a soft spot in his heart for orphans, mm -hmm. widows, the fatherless, the poor. Mm -hmm. And um, even the Toronto Maple Leafs. <laughs> you know, the real down and outers. <laughs> yes. So, I think I inherited that. I often cheer for the underdog. Yes. When I don't know who else to cheer for, I pick a... Mm -hmm. Like, the, my team in the NFL is the Arizona Cardinals. Oh. Mm -hmm. They haven't done too well since Kurt Warner uh, was their quarterback. I'm, this is fantastic. I didn't know we were going to talk about football. This is perfect. Yeah. And my love for sports is from my dad. Yes. Yeah. That's fantastic. 
That is so good. Well, and you know, even when you talk about reaching out to those who are, you know, the underdog, Dreen, I see that in you. Mm. I've seen that so often in you, you know, reaching out even to people who would be new Canadians yeah. and, mm. and really trying to, you Absolutely. know, extend a hand of love and, and mm -hmm. even welcoming people into our church that maybe, in you know, some of us who have got deep roots in the church, you kind of take it for granted that, well, doesn't everybody know everybody? Yeah. And in fact, that's not really the case. And yeah. so I'd even just honor you here today that, mm. that if yeah. that's something that you got from your dad, it's a beautiful mm -hmm. thing that you're mm -hmm. uh, reaching out to those people who are, you know, trying to find their way in a new country and trying to find Absolutely. their way in, in a new church. So, um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful Thank just you. how you can continue to honor your dad and obviously so honor the Father in heaven by sure. doing that too, by mm -hmm. having open arms of love for that. So that's, that's tremendous. Mm -hmm. So obviously, as, as we think about uh, the idea of sacrifice, you know, God mm -hmm. the Father demonstrated uh, us love by sacrificing his son, Jesus, on the cross for us. You know, when you think... Um, of sacrifice, you know, what sacrifices do you consider your father made for yourself and for mm -hmm. others that really made a mark on you? I think about um, sacrificing time. I think of all the times my dad has taken the time to help me with something or to do something for me or my brother. You know, my dad is a very practical person and doesn't like to see things broken or not, you know, done right. And mm -hmm. he's he's so willing to help help out whenever we need it. And I was thinking of, you know, something that sticks out for me from when we were younger was um, my brother and I, we both delivered flyers for a number of years and <laughs> my dad even, you know, he would he worked very hard, um, sometimes long hours. He would oftentimes come home from work and help one of us with our flyer route oh. many, many times, probably more often than not, he was, <laughs> he was helping us deliver them and, you know, we got to keep the money but he was, you know, willing to help us and, you know, now as an adult, um, and I'm sure there's, you know, a lot of other adult children out there that can relate, you know, my dad is the number one person on my call list when something goes wrong, you know, <laughs> can you help me with, you know, with whatever car or house problem is, you know, something needs to be fixed. And mm -hmm. so there's so many times when I've called or texted and he's sacrificed his time to come and help me with whatever I need and mm -hmm. I am sure that that has not always been convenient for him yeah. to do that but um, I've never been made to feel like you know I was inconveniencing him in any way he's always you know very happy to to yeah. come and make things right yeah, yeah that's fantastic mm -hmm. well and I know Melanie was mentioning earlier that her dad actually works in the healthcare uh, arena as well and obviously with everything that's happened with COVID he's been working at the hospital and if you knew mm -hmm. Melanie's dad he's had a quite a mustache for a while and that was one of those things that needed to be sacrificed, sacrificed in order, yeah. yeah in order to stay under the mask <laughs> and so thank you Dave for doing that <laughs> and being able to sacrifice you know some part of yourself that uh, <laughs> you know for the good of others so it's uh, it's just those those little things isn't it that you know you're willing to kind of go above your yourself and, and yeah. give away your own sort of personal <laughs> likes uh, for the sake of others so it's a beautiful thing. So Mona, in that same way, uh, when you think of sacrifice and, and thinking mm. of sacrifice from, you know, spiritual fathers and your father, um, you know, what really springs to mind? Well, I have to go back to my grandpa and mm. tell the story of um, he had worked for 47 years for the CN Railroad mm. and had retired. They had purchased a house in Estevan. He and grandma were going to retire and live in Estevan. And then our life changed dramatically. Mm. And... It seemed to me, I mean, of course I was very young, but it seemed to me as though just <laughs> without any thought for their own desires or future, sold that house in Esteban, moved to Regina, and mm -hmm. looked after Mom and I mm -hmm. in whatever ways we needed. And it wasn't until I was older and looked back on that and realized the sacrifice mm -hmm. that that was and that, you know, a, a complete life change, mm -hmm. but not... And I thought about it, and I thought, I cannot come up with any instance, any time, when we were made to feel like that was, you know, that we were being sacrificed for, or mm -hmm. that, that it was anything but a pleasure mm. to, to do that for us. And, and as I look, I, I feel that's very Christ-like, that yeah. the, mm -hmm. you know, the sacrifice was made, mm -hmm. but not continuing to tell you mm -hmm. about the sacrifice. Mm. Right. And so... Um, yeah, I, I appreciated that, and and as I say, far more as an adult than I did as a child. I didn't yeah. I didn't grasp it. I thought, well, why wouldn't you want to come live here with us? <laughs> Hello, but uh, <laughs> yeah. but um, and and I believe they did. But I, I realized too there was sacrifice yeah. in that, yeah. and mm -hmm. but again, 
just to be obedient to what they felt the Lord was telling them to do yeah. is what he did. So yeah, that's so very good. thankful. Well, especially nowadays, you think about getting to the end of your work career, like that's something to really look forward to. Yes. You know, we're going to retire and mm-hmm. we're going to mm-hmm. kind of be able to do what we want to. Mm-hmm. And for him to have made no. that decision to say, yeah. no, I'm going to sacrifice what I mm-hmm. want to do in order for the good of you. Yeah, it's, uh, my it daughter and my game. granddaughter. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. It's a, a beautiful picture yeah. of, you're right, it is Christ-like, mm-hmm. uh, kind yeah. of setting aside your wants in your life mm-hmm. in, in many ways. Yep. So it's awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Dreen, in that same way, uh, sacrifice, what, what springs mm-hmm. to mind when you think about your father's sacrifice? Well, there's a few things, Pastor Jim. So I grew up in the 50s and 60s. Now that's the 1950s and 60s. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there, were, there weren't as many regulations mm. back then. Uh, for example, he, he was strong in providing. Mm. So if you think of uh, the provisions that God gives us. Mm-hmm. But he's also given us the opportunity to provide for our families. Mm. So uh, he was a grain buyer mm. for the pool elevator agent at the time. And so I can imagine the money was stretched pretty thin mm. uh, with six children. <laughs> and uh, we lived in the pool elevator uh, agent's home mm. and uh, paid all the expenses around that, of course. But mm. <clears throat> so he would uh, be resourceful and... Uh, would find opportunities in the community, needs were, were needing to be fulfilled, like sharpening saws. Mm, mm-hmm. Well, he set up his own little sharpening saw business. Oh, wow. And that could be done at the elevator office mm-hmm. without any problem. Probably not today, but <laughs> <laughs> there might be a union job that would be <laughs> taken. Don't want to mess with that. Yeah. <laughs> also, he was resourceful with our family. Um, there was a need to, to have rocks picked on farmers' fields. Mm-hmm. And it was before the invention of rock pickers. <laughs> but we had, well, we didn't take our little sister, but there were five rock pickers right in the home. <laughs> <laughs> so he hitched up a, a homemade uh, cart behind his 59 Chev, mm-hmm. the wow. avocado one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And off we went wow. on a Saturday and picked rocks. Wow. And I don't remember getting paid for those, but <laughs> I don't regret not getting paid either because yeah. I think we did reap the rewards. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. And uh, to, oh, he also, in a small town that we lived in, it's called Hoffer, it was a Jewish settlement. Hmm. And uh, the regulations did not include that you couldn't have a cow and a little barn in your backyard. Oh, excellent. <laughs> so he had a cow <laughs> and milked a cow. We separated cream. Wow. Uh, took, uh, w- took the cream down to the train station and shipped the cream. Yeah. Got the cream check. We made butter, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> buttermilk. That's fantastic. And uh, those are the kind of resourceful things. Mm-hmm. Later on, I did hear from other people that he would slip a $20 bill mm. to people in need. Wow. Uh, some of them were Bible school students. Mm-hmm. And uh, they, we heard years later, and that was when a $20 bill mm-hmm. was really worth something. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. absolutely. Those are some of the sacrifices. Yeah, for sure. Great. Well, and it sounds like he was uh, willing to sacrifice much of his time, too. Yes. You know, it sounds very entrepreneurial, but mm-hmm. obviously yes. what mm-hmm. comes with that is sacrificing your, your time and yeah. you know, l- leisure time. At least it sounds like he was wise that he was being entrepreneurial and roping you into it as well, <laughs> you know, <to laughs> bringing you into the business, whether you liked it or not. So <laughs> that's fantastic. <laughs> So obviously I mentioned uh, earlier just the idea of honoring. You know, I said mm-hmm. one of the Ten Commandments mm-hmm. speaks of honoring our father, fathers and our mothers for long life. You know, what comes to mind when you think of that word, honor? And I'll be- start with you again. Sure. Um, I think, of, you know, honoring someone means treating them with respect, uh, not only with words, but with your actions. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, that should be consistent both publicly and privately. You know, you honor them, mm-hmm. um, you know, in the same way. And, you know, it's really easy for me to honor my dad. Um, mm-hmm. He is an honorable person. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've also learned about, you know, honoring your parents from watching how my dad has honored his parents. Mm-hmm. Who um, My grandma is still living, but my grandpa passed away five years ago. And getting to see how my dad has honored both of them 
as they mm. have aged, and I would say particularly um, at the end of my grandpa's life, that has been really meaningful for me, and I think re a really great example for me to follow how you know I've seen his relationship with them um, change as he's moved into more of a caretaker role, and mm. how he has shown them honor in that way. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's fantastic. It's funny; it makes me think of not my dad so much, but my mom. Uh, my grandmother lived to be mm. 99, mm -hmm. and my mom, at the end of uh, of my grandma's life, she was in a care home that was in the, the town where my mom uh, still lives out in Lumsden, and she would go to visit her every day. Mm -hmm. And my mom sort of tongue-in-cheek said to me, remember, like, watch what I'm doing. <laughs> yes, I have So that I've one day, you know, like, I, I could follow have, in yes, my footsteps. Yes. Yeah. So, but <laughs> I've she, been you know, it was way, a yeah. joke, of course. She just <laughs> was doing it because she loved her mom yeah, so much. Yeah, exactly. And, um, and yeah, got to the end of my grandma's life, and you could just tell that there was just something that it, there was a, a, another bond that had happened there. And so you had to be able to kind of walk in that way and, and demonstrate uh, love and honor and care mm -hmm. in that way. Yeah, it's, mm -hmm. it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mona, in that same way, when, what comes to mind when you think of that word, honor? I've actually thought quite a bit about that over the years, and I, I feel that the, the wording of that passage gives no room for amb ambiguity mm -hmm. whatsoever. It doesn't say honor if, it doesn't say honor when, it doesn't mm -hmm. say honor until, it just says honor. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. And so um, in the case of my father, he had a, a very difficult childhood and, and some of the scars and the wounds from that played out mm -hmm. in his adult life. And so there were times when, you know, maybe the things that he did or the way he reacted to situations weren't particularly honorable, mm -hmm. but because the word didn't give me an opportunity mm -hmm. to say, well, not mm -hmm. today, yeah. you know, maybe tomorrow, or it, it just was mm -hmm. a commandment, and mm -hmm. so you do it. And yes, I, I know there are times when, yeah, it's very easy with some people who are honorable, mm -hmm. and, and there were times when it was very easy mm -hmm. to honor my dad. He had great qualities. He was incredibly patient, and mm -hmm. he was kind of like you, you said with your dad, a great lover of the underdog, mm -hmm. and you know, and... <laughs> quite funny, I thought, but maybe just because I thought we had the same sense of humor, I don't know, but <laughs> I, I, you know, yep. thought he was funny, and, yep. and um, so there were times when, no, it, it wasn't difficult, but there were times when it was a choice, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and I believe, you know, blessing comes from that obedience, yeah. mm -hmm. and there is, um, yeah, it's, it's not a, it's not an if, it's not a yeah. if you want, yeah. it's mm -hmm. a command. And, and I would encourage, as I think we talked about a while ago, encourage parents, don't make that hard for your kids. Mm. Like, you know, be as honorable as you possibly can for them because mm. don't make that a struggle yeah. for, for the people that need to be obedient and honor, yeah. honor you. Mm. And so, yeah, no, it, there's, there's great reward in that obedience. Yeah. Oh, uh, caveats in that verse, mm -hmm. is there? Mm -hmm. it doesn't say only honor the honorable. It's, no. Uh, so... I just, mm -hmm. I honor you for, you know, <laughs> for following through on that, even when I'm sure that there were some difficult mm -hmm. moments to continue to honor and love. And so, Doreen, in that same way, what comes to mind when you think of that word, uh, honor, and especially, um, mm -hmm. you know, in light of all that we've talked about and sacrifice mm -hmm. it and, and other things, what, what springs to mind? Mm -hmm. I echo some of the things that Mel and uh, Mona have said, too. Uh, and remember, I was raised in the 50s, <laughs> <laughs> and that was a time when, I'll speak for my husband and I, Gerard and I, our fathers were, uh, we try and think of where they came from. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, Gerard's dad came from Europe as a young man all by himself mm -hmm. and uh, settled around the Yorkton area. In that era... The father was tasked sometimes with the disciplinary portion mm. of the parenting. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it was because they worked all day out in a field somewhere and then came in tired and uh, <laughs> there was a few messages conveyed <laughs> that needed attention. <laughs> yes, it's a very delicate way to put it. <laughs> Wait till your father gets home. That's what I was thinking when you were saying that. But yeah, yeah, sorry, go on. <laughs> but uh, so, so their task was... Ser a little more serious, maybe. <laughs> the mom got away with maybe some of the more fluffy, lovely stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and, mm -hmm. and so, but still, we we both recognize where they came from. We sometimes think, "Wow, mm. they came from that background and still honored the Lord in their lives mm. and raised their families, were faithful mm. to their wives." Yeah. So many good things, and I think I don't know if you mentioned it the other day, but we. I heard somebody say, and I think it was you, mm. look for the good. Mm. Yeah. I don't know if that's a scripture, but yeah. look for the good. Mm -hmm. 
We'll take Philippians 4, say. (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Absolutely. It's got to be in there somewhere, for sure. For sure. It's true. You can can see the things, uh, you know, even as you look through characters of the Bible, right? The only perfect father is is Jesus, Mm -hmm. the... the, uh, is the Father in Heaven and Jesus is His Son. Um, hmm. And so as we look at other people, mm-hmm. even characters in the Bible, you can see imperfections in them, right? God, mm. God is willing to put people like Solomon in the Bible in spite of the fact that there were some imperfections there, mm-hmm. but we see the good that was there and mm-hmm. we take what's good, learn from, you know, what are the things I should do and what are the things that I should learn to not do. Right. And mm-hmm. so in that same way, we're, you know, what is the gold that's residing in every individual? You know, we're all created in the image of God. And if we can mm. see the gold in one another and mm. kind of call those things out, well, then we're calling out the best in one another mm-hmm. as opposed to, you know, finding the little things, the specks in our brother's eye while we've got a plank in our own eye, right? Mm-hmm. It's the same same sort of idea. So, yeah, to be able to see your, your dad do that and to see our fathers kind of model mm-hmm. that and uh, our spiritual fathers model that for us, it helps us, you know, become who we are today. Mm-hmm. Well, I just want to thank you all just so much for this today. It was so good, and I'm so glad that, again, we had a chance to be in this beautiful environment yes. and have this, this conversation. You know, if you're watching today, and if any of our stories ring true with you, if you feel like you had a, a great uh, childhood and your father was you know, fantastic and he's still alive, take a moment today and tell him. Don't hold back. Like, give him a, give him a virtual hug even. I guess maybe it's, <laughs> the world is broken a little bit, so you could probably hug your dad, I think, at this point. Um, <laughs> um, check the regulations first. Though. Um, tell him you love him, though. Give him yes. a call. Mm-hmm. And if you find yourself in a situation maybe where your father has, has passed, it, you can still talk about him. Mm-hmm. Talk to him about the people that are around you and honor him. That even if your father's passed, you can still honor him. And even if you find yourself in a situation where your upbringing and your father was less than ideal, find those nuggets of gold where you can really honor what God mm-hmm. uh, did in them and, and what they did to make you the person that you are today. So just as we close, let's just close our time together in prayer. Father, we are so thankful for you and we love you. We thank you for sending your son Jesus to die on the cross for us, that as we accept you as our personal Lord and Savior, Lord, we know that we are eternally going to be with our Father in heaven who loves us. And if there's anyone out there today who hasn't made that personal decision for Jesus, I pray that today would be that day, that anyone who calls on the name of the Lord would be saved. And I pray that they would call out to their Father in heaven who loves them. And we know that story of the prodigal son from the Bible, that the Father is just waiting for us Mm -hmm. to come back into relationship with him. So I just pray a blessing on each person that would make that decision. And God, for all of us who are Christians, God, we we acknowledge again today just your supremacy, Jesus, in our life. And God, what blessing we have if, if everything else fell away, that if we have you, our mm-hmm. Father who loves us, oh, we are so richly blessed just mm-hmm. as a result of that. So I just pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you today. Amen.